Welcome everybody. Welcome everybody to the Roman tournament. The Roman Celeste Coliseum tournament. This open tournament started signups two weeks ago and we're finally here on opening weekend with two excellent players. A lot of international scheduling to get to this place, but uh, we're finally here. And a huge shout out to Artish here for uh, casting some games as well. We just saw some some crazy games <laughs> with the Ace, uh, which was absolutely legendary. Um, and so I'm hoping that these games are going to be uh, just as exciting, just as interesting. Um, and Eshwar actually going for a nice and early barracks play which is good looks like Kraken Co found only one hunt um, one hunt in the, the front of his base so that means that this is going to be even more even more exposed than normal for Eshwar's rating bets grungy I got you I got you here we go So what I'm gonna do for you, Grungy? Shit, I can't. Uh, can I make you a mod? Ah, weird. All right, Ashworth scouted this. Um, both these players are, are should be around the same skill level. I think potentially Ashworth might be slightly better. I'd love to see what uh, what you guys predicted. But I anticipate this raid is going to be quite cumbersome for Kraken Co. to handle. That being said, if he does handle it well, he will be uh, able to quickly move on to a second town center. But yeah, here comes the Spearman. As a Babylonian player, it's very easy for you to just pack up and run. And that's exactly what Kraken Co. is doing. So he's going to be relegated to these goats, but he's gathered quite a few of them. He's always got, even got this back hunt, so awesome. Not losing that, that 50 wood that other sieves would have lost. So already not doing too bad. And yeah, Eshwar is going to continue to pump up some Spearmen, but rightly, smartly switching to a second TC uh, build order. If your opponent's going greedy, you should make sure you should uh, not fall too behind in the greed race. Kraken Co. has enough to go to age 2. Surprised? Yeah, it's not doing that, and that's because he is doing that. I just needs to make sure to continue producing lots and lots of villagers. Eshwar doing a great job. 15 villagers to the 16 of Kraken Co. So maybe at one point he was housed. I love this. Love this. Kragenko sees everything that's going on. He's fully aware. This is... There's only two villagers. No, there's four villagers here. So that's 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 getting up. No worries there. And Krakenko forced off this hunt again. But unfortunately, Eshwar wasn't targeting the villager with the low health. Make sure that you have enabled your health bars. Oh, he's going to pick up this uh, this house. And just outside of TC range, really good pressure put, being put on by Kraken Co. He does have enough to get to the second... He already is in the second age, but he has enough soon to get a second town center. But uh, lots of pressure in his base. So, of course, he's going to be wary. Eshwar going to the second age just now, dropping a couple more villagers. Nice defensible town center spot for Kraken Co. And back on the hunts. Babylon doing Babylon things. Hey, of course. We got Eshwar X Elite. Okay, six Spearmen coming here. You might need even more villagers on the second TC. Potentially? No, I think it'll go up. Uh, the one thing, Krakenko does need to target... Yeah, something else. Excellent. He's targeting this Spearman. I think once the Spearman goes down, the, the TC should be able to be... Oh no! It's gonna be so close! No! That's devastating! 
Kraken Cole loses his second town center, and that's just on the back of Eshwar getting enough resources to drop down his own second town center. But let's see, Villager count 21 to the 18. So Kraken Cole's not out of this yet, and he just needs to he needs to focus up. He is not out of this yet. He's going to be a minute or so behind on his second town center, but uh, it's not the end of the world. I will say fantastic pressure and map sense from Eshwar. Really great job scouting that all. Okay, Kraken Co. Has enough food in the bank, has enough uh, wood and now stone in the bank, dropping down another second town center, not deterred, even more defensible in his base. Love this. But Eshwar is, uh, he is dropping some villagers though. So he's got up a second town center, just about, but he doesn't have the vill the, the food. Doesn't have the food. And this is why, Geese, you don't resign. You don't resign. He's only got seven villagers on food. He's getting hunting dogs to get that conservation and gathering rate increase. But, uh, Crack Co. 25 villagers to the 22. Ashwar, I'd love to see him scouting some more. Questioning why Krakenko has not resigned yet, right? If he hasn't resigned, there's something that's going on. And I love this. He's getting up a stables. Ready to use and abuse the Lancers. Oh, excellent. He's even moving up to take this, uh, this forward hunt that he lost initially. And with those Lancers coming out, it'll be more than enough protection. Oh, I don't know what happened here. But they all stopped working. Alright. is gonna see this. Unfortunately, he might spur Eshwar to do something and move out of the map. But instead, he's just getting up a two archer ranges. So, double archer range and, and barracks composition is fairly standard for Greeks versus Babylon. Another village count, 32 villagers to the 29. So Krakenko is doing good. He just needs to make sure that he doesn't lose in this mid-game stage where Eshwar has a much larger army than he does. Um, so he's going to have one production and, and choosing to go for gardens instead of anything else. Hmm. I'm a bit worried for that. I love this defensive base layout from Krakenko. Look at this. Look at this, great, great work. And Eshwar just continue to mass up, up to 55 population. Um, really good job producing lots of villagers and units. Only a slight thing I'm worried about, slight thing. Not, not too big, but slight thing. Uh, Lancers are good, but they are not as good as they used to be. So when you have this many spearmen in the mix, I, I think they no longer just demolish spearmen and with that i think oh no Krakenko needs to run yeah yeah yeah. his his villager lead is is there but it's it's fading right so 40 villagers to the 39 with good production for mesh war um, love to see Krakenko queue up yeah lots more villagers let's go he's still in this he's still in this needs he's going for another stables um against all these talks and all of these spearmen uh, something that, that PFTK has been doing a lot and which I'd love to see more players use is like the Royal Guards hey, the elite clan is out here in full force cheering on their uh, their buddies love it love it Ashrar doing a great job macroing up like constant unit production in the back here let's see in his base. Still uh, sitting on two archer ranges, one barracks. Um, getting up an armory though. So, first armory drop down of the game. Uh, and let's see here. Yeah, Krakko sitting on a lot of resources that he could be using. Using and abusing. Hey, Grey Wolf's there also. Hades is here also cheering on his, his clan mate. Love it. 
Looks like Krenko's struggling for some more wood to put down some production facilities, but I like this. He's moving out on the map. He's gonna try to do some uh try to do some raiding, but this is a bad time, and Eshwar is hitting some critical mass for both the number of talks and the spearmen in this army. Uh let's just hope that Krakenko gets here fast enough. Triple Lancer production going on. And he can make lots and lots of, of units here. Okay, so forcing the garrison with the Lancers, but not forcing the army back. Ashra are now sitting comfortably in the middle of the base. And Krakenko sees this. Let's see if he uh, if he loses these Lancers. And I, th I think he is. He's going to lose all these Lancers for free. He needs to queue up a ton, ton more Lancers here. Coming back with these ones here, but uh, this army is so large. Ashwar going to H3 and pushing. Big, big no-no, but uh, let's see if it's going to be enough. I think he has a large enough army here. Great work for Krakenko coming back in the mix and, and trying to take out these... Uh, these Toxodes as they reinforce, but these Spearmen, still 13 Spearmen here. They are fighting under double TC fire, so that's going to really, really help Krakenko in the short term. Although in the in the long term, he's going to be running out of gold soon. He's down to 55 gold and he has no villagers on gold because this is his only gold mine. And there goes his stone, so I'd, he needs to move some guys onto, onto stone or get a tower. Or get a tower. So the front line, I was about, <laughs> I was about to say the front line of Ashwar is about to has been depleted, but there come another like ten spearmen. Uh, and let's see here. No, these guys are on food, not on gold. All right, gold has been reestablished, but there's only seven hundred gold here. Ashwar is very good. I like this. I like this. You you push into the front of your base when you. Are unable to completely, you know, demolish your opponent or beat your opponent. You go for the extremities because that's where they're gathering resources from. And he spots it, but maybe at the last minute. And yeah, Krakenko rightfully saw the army. Didn't want to engage with his 12 villagers, but uh, good static defenses here. Lancer's getting on the bowmen, on the, on the Toxodes. And let's see here, 20 Spearman Champion. And these Lancers just aren't as good at uh, against Spearman as they used to be. Especially not in H3. And so he lost quite, quite a few of them. Still 15 Spearman in the mix. And this double TC fire is still strong. Yeah, Eshwar, Eshwar just started playing. I remember he... Oh, well, he's getting a market in his base. That might be a misclick, uh, for all I know. Um, see, 13 villagers. Uh, Eshwar, is, he's already in H3, so he's going to be making some Padromos. And as soon as he gets uh, a critical mass of Padromos, there's nothing in Krakenko's army that can defeat this. Um, oh, and look at this. Eshwar... Makes a, a watch post, sees all these exposed villagers, and it's gonna. You realize you can't push in with all of this talks. Like, there's nothing you can do against this double TC. So, uh, smart work by him to come around to the right hand side, get some rams up, multiple rams being queued up. Actually, Ashwar can see this. These are a lot of exposed gold villagers. Eerie, I'll meet you in the semis. Oh, that's a, a big vote of confidence for Geese here. The Padromos are in the mix. And here comes the mostly Tox army of Eshwar mixed in with, of course, the key unit here is the Battering Ram. You just need to make sure not to lose them to, for free to these Lancers. Um, and I think, unfortunately, he's going to do that. Okay, Kraken Co. Doing good. Just uh, empty Q is not what you want to see. And unfortunately, he's down 50 pop now. I'm just... I'm so impressed that he has held out for this long. Um, 
and held up quite well. Quite well. <clears throat> Battering ram coming in, going to be cleaned up very easily by these uh, these lancers. There's no, uh, there's pierce armor, but there's no melee cav armor. But there are padronos. So the gardens are going down. The first TC seem the most exposed unit. Uh, another another thing goes down. I think this is this is gonna be it. Grenko floating a lot of resources, but that's because of Ashwar not making him gather anything other than wood. And Ashwar, yeah, showing showing his dominance right here. That was great. Great game. <clears throat>